Hi, this is Eli Kranzberg, and welcome to this series where we're going to take a brand new, ground up, fresh look at Ozone version 10. Now, for those of you that are new to Ozone, let me give you a bit of background. There are basically three generations of modern audio software effects processing, and Ozone 10 embraces the best of all of them. And there are some fantastic new modules and features in 10 for those of you who do know earlier versions of Ozone. Now, the first iteration of effects processing that we all know and love is analog modeling, where we emulate hardware that exists in the physical world. And along with all the saturation and character and coloration of sound that that encompasses, and we know a lot of third-party skeuomorphic plugins that look like the hardware, Ozone 10 has all the colorful kind of analog modeling characteristics that we know and love from a lot of these vintage units. Now, the second generation or more modern approach is using computers for what they're best at, digital precision, where you get innovative DSP, spectrum analyzers, detailed metering, transparent, comprehensive signal processing and control that give experienced users the ability to dive deep into the details. And Ozone 10 embraces that. We get into a lot of the modules where we have a lot of control over all the specifics. Now, the newest stream of audio processing involves assisted or automated DSP, and it's designed to give the user an outcome-driven workflow where attention is focused on sonic outcomes rather than dealing with complex parameters and adjusting minor tweaks. And Ozone embraces all of them, not only embraces and has them all, but integrates them all into one unified workflow. It's really exciting what they've done with Ozone 10. And as I say, we're going to take a ground up look. Now, the whole Ozone 10 experience for mastering your music is built around the Mothership plugin. And that's what we're looking at here. This is the main Ozone plugin that includes multiple processing modules and a customizable signal chain. It has Master Assistant and the new Assistant view, which I'm really excited to show you later in the series. And there we get into the detailed view of the individual modules and the signal chain up here. And it's got comprehensive metering and referencing and previewing different codecs and so on. But we also have the individual component plugins. So if you want to call it just an equalizer, just a vintage compressor or what have you, you can use that. But we'll spend most of our time in this series in the Mothership plugin. So let's take a quick look around to get a big picture look at the main interface components, and then we'll dive in deeper in the next video. Now at the top, we have the global header over here, and here we have the inter-plugin communication instance name, the IPC name. If you have multiple instances of Ozone 10 in your mix on different tracks, you can name them over here, and then they can communicate with each other depending on the different processes that you're using. Now here we get to the new assistant view, and we jump back to the detailed view. We have presets for the overall state of the Ozone 10 Mothership plugin. We have an undo button over here. And then we have an undo history. We have different options. We call it the reference manual with that. And then it's the ozone icon. Now, here's the main part where we have the signal chain where we adjust the contents and the order of the processing chain. And as you click on each one of these modules, the main controls update here. And we can drag them around and we can use X to get rid of them. Then we use the plus button to call up additional ones and so on. Now here we can turn each module on and off. We can solo it. We have presets that are available for each module and we can customize the chain like that. And then finally, once we have everything in place, we have the input output panel at the end here where we have input and output gain controls and metering. We've got global bypass and gain matching, which are really useful and a bunch of other functions for auditioning different codecs and dithering and using reference material and a lot more. We'll get started with it all in the next video.